Guys, Marco here, welcome back to another finger picking lesson. Today I wanna to walk you through the creative process of writing a good melody. Now there are three steps that I follow all the time. The step number one is, you know, write a beautiful chord progression. Step number two, learn the scale. And the step number three is shape the melody. Now we're gonna check each step one at a time so that you can kind of understand the process that I use so that hopefully you can get inspired and come up with your own melodies. Now, we're gonna take it step by step. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, guys, and if you wanna get the tab, check my Patreon page and support this channel. So, let's get started, close up, how to write a beautiful melody. Now, guys, it's obvious that beautiful chords will inspire you more than boring chords. And so we need to find a way to spice up chords a little bit. Now, the chord progression we're checking out in this example is C major, G major, D minor, and the A minor chord. Now this is already a beautiful chord progression, but we wanna kind of, you know, make it a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna play like this. Now these are just the chords, but they already sound beautiful, and they sound like there is a melody within the chords. So the C major, we're gonna change the C major into a C add 11 chord. And we're gonna play it like this. So we have the A string fret number three, the G string open, the B string fret number six, and the E string open. So I'm only plucking five, three, two, and one. Then I have the G major chord, which is a G6 in this case, the low E string fret number three, the G string open, the B string fret number three, and the E string open. Um, fretting the strings with the finger number one and the finger number two, it can be stretchy on the left hand, so take it step by step. Beautiful sounding chord. The third chord is a D minor add nine, and we're gonna slide all the way up to position number six and play the D string open, the G string fret number seven, the B string fret number six, and the E string open. I'm plucking four, three, two, and one. Beautiful sounding chord. The last one is the A minor add 11 chord, and I'm playing this beautiful chord. A string open, G string fret number five, the B string fret number three, and the E string open. I'm plucking five, three, two, and one. So the very first step is that you want to learn the chord progression. Just pluck one time. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. And I kind of play this bass line. So on the A minor I have one, two, three, four. And on the fourth count I'm playing the A string fret number two. And then I'm going, to, I'm going back to the C major chord, okay? Very simple, pretty cool, and the chords already are awesome. Now the finger picking pattern that I'm using uh, for each chord is very, very simple. And we're gonna assign, obviously, a finger to each string, so you're gonna have the thumb always on the bass note, and then the index on the third string, middle on the second, and ring finger on the first string. Um, we're gonna call that P for the thumb, I for the index, M for the middle, and A for the ring. So for the C add nine, uh, sorry, for the C add eleven chord, I'm gonna plug uh, with this pattern, which is P I M A P I M A. Thumb, index, middle, and ring. For the G six, I'm playing a different picking pattern, which is P I A M. So I'm playing. Six, three, one, two. Six, three, one, two. For the D minor add nine, I'm gonna play the same uh, as the G six. So it's P, I, A, M. Thumb, index, middle, and ring. Fourth, third, first, and second. And for the last chord, the A minor add eleven is P, I, M, A. Thumb, index, middle, and ring. So. Step 
number two, learn the scale. Now the scale is the most important melody tool you will ever learn because the notes of the melody come from the scale and so you have to learn the scale. Now we are in a, in a C major key, the example is in C major, uh, therefore we need to learn the C major scale. Now the notes of the scale are C, D, E, F, G, A, B and C. Yeah, seven notes, pretty easy. Now the trick here is to memorize and learn the scale within the chord shape, within the same position as the chord. And so if I'm playing a C add 11 chord like this, I wanna have the notes of the scale right in this position. And so I will, for example, play the note C on the G string fret number five, the note D on the B string fret number three, the note E, I can play the E string open, then the note F on the B string fret number six, the note G on the top E string fret number three, and fret number five for the note A. I'm playing just, you know, a chunk of the scale, C, D, E, F, G, and A, I stop on the A, because these are all the notes that I can play in this box, okay? Now, I could play uh, also the scale on the D string, but most of the time the melody is mainly played on the top three strings, so you wanna focus just on the top three strings. Now for the G6, you could have the same scale. So you have C, D, E, F, G, A. Now don't worry too much if the scale doesn't sound right on the chord, because anyway we're gonna single out some of the notes um, to write a melody. For the D minor chord, uh, we're gonna kind of change position and play the scale here. Because the chord is played in this position, we're gonna play C and D on fret number five and seven on the G string, and then E, F, and G, which is five, six, and eight, and on the top E string, five, seven, and eight. back to the A minor. So we change position with the A minor, so we change the scale. We don't change the scale, sorry, we change the position in which we play the scale. Same scale as the C and the G, scale position. So you wanna spend a little bit of time familiarizing yourself with the scale, with the C major scale played between fret one and fret number eight. You wanna know all the notes and then we can begin to write the melody. Now step three is shape the melody. And obviously, once you learn all the notes, you wanna then come up with a beautiful melody. Now I wouldn't really, you know, start with the melody right away. Instead, I would play the chord twice. And on the third count, just play the bass note followed by the melody. So you wanna let the bass note ring out. And so we're gonna play the melody like this. So as you can see guys, very simple example, but it works. So we're gonna play the C add nine twice. One, two, and three. Then the notes of the melody, I'm playing four notes. The top E string fret number three and five with the note G and A, the E string open, and the B string fret number three. Then I play the G6, two, three. On the third count, I always wanna play just the bass note. So it's um, one, two, three, then I have 
four notes. Um, I'm going to start the melody by playing the B string fret number three, twice, the E string open, and then I'm going to slide the B string fret three all the way up to the fret number six, where I'm going to play the D minor at nine. Again, we play the chord twice, one, two, bass note, and we play the melody which is on the top E string, fret number five with the note A, the B string fret number eight, and six, and we finish with the fret number five, and we play the A minor. Now we're going to keep the A minor the same, meaning we're going to play the arpeggio twice. One, two, and three, and four, and one. We'll start again. And so on, so on. So, make the last chord conclusive. It will make the structure clear for you and also the audience. So you never want to kind of play the same thing for each chord. Now guys, obviously this is a very simple example. You can add more notes from the melody or you can add a different chord progression. For example, we could go from here So it's a beautiful approach, very simple. You can keep things really, really simple and come up with your own ideas. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson, guys. Let me know if you like it and I'll see you on the next video. Enjoy.